Good afternoon, everybody who has joined us this afternoon on this IIEA seminar. Um, we're very pleased that you've been able to join us and I hope you will find our presentation interesting. We were to have Mr. Fabrizio Leggeri to talk to us, but unfortunately, due to work commitments, he's not able to join us, but we're very honored indeed to be joined by Goetz Brinkman, who is the Director of the International and European Cooperation Division in Frontex. Um, now, as you know, anybody who's already joined one of our webinars, you can join the discussion using the Q&A button on the Zoom, um, and you, you can send in questions during the presentation if something, if you're alerted to something you want to ask, and when the presentation is finished, we can come to those questions. Just to tell you that uh, the presentation and the Q&A today are both on the record. Now, to introduce Mr. Brinkman, um, he has extensive experience of over 20 years on legal and international affairs. He is the director of the International and European Cooperation Division of Frontex. But before joining Frontex as head of the International European Cooperation Unit, he worked for the European External Action Service as head of the section for planning CSDP missions in the Crisis Management Planning Directorate. Now that's very complicated CV, but uh, it's clear he has very wide experience. His previous experience actually includes several positions in the Western Balkans uh, on field work, as well as in the area of the rule of law with the United Nations and the OSCE. And we look forward to his presentation. Um, he's going to give the presentation and cover the, the establishment of Frontex, um, the establishment of the EU standing core, uh, the benefits arising from the Schengen area and describe some examples of operational support and deployments that Frontex delivers in the Mediterranean, in the English Channel and at the EU's eastern borders. Um, I just want to say that those of you who are here today, Frontex doesn't always get a good press. It can get itself uh, criticised and has been criticised in the European Parliament and by NGOs. So it'll be interesting to hear Mr Brinkman today and see how Frontex copes with that kind of criticism and continues to do the vital work that they have to do. So I'd now like to introduce Mr Goetz Brinkman and the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction and uh, well, Good afternoon to, to everybody, to the chair, uh, the members of the Institute, uh, and also the, the distinguished participants today. Well, indeed, it's, it's my great pleasure to participate today in this webinar organized by Ireland's leading think tank, I understand, on, on international affairs. Well, I personally don't have so often the opportunity to, to participate in an event and address an audience which is predominantly Irish or, or based in Ireland. And as you said, uh, Nora, I, I'm uh, delivering this presentation or almost a speech uh, on behalf of the executive director of Frontex, who unfortunately at short notice could not uh, join us today. Uh, but I will do my best to, to adequately uh, represent him. Uh, I will focus uh, the intervention today on Frontex operational support uh, provided to the member states for the management of the common EU's external borders. But before going into that, I would like to first make a short reference to Schengen and uh, the latest steps taken by the EU to reinforce the Schengen area. As we all know, Ireland is not part of the Schengen area and therefore Ireland is also not a full member of Frontex either. Uh, however, the EU legislator has still established specific mechanisms for Ireland uh, participation in, in Frontex uh, activities based on um, ad hoc requests uh, from its um, representative of our management board. You might know there is a management board in Frontex um, composed of the, the heads of the border authorities of the member states and Schengen associated countries and the commission also holds two chairs. Uh, Irish law enforcement officers have definitely a great deal of expertise to support our operations or activities, which could indeed create win-win uh, situations for both Ireland and also other Schengen member states involved, or indeed Frontex itself. In the headquarters, where we have roughly 1,000 uh, staff now and based in Warsaw, we have 10 Irish colleagues 
uh, deployed in Frontex and working with us. Four of them are uh, part of the newly created standing core. So they are not in the headquarters, but in our operations at the external borders. And six of them are working in the headquarters. So Ireland has uh, also participated in the past in, in uh, some of our operational activities, um, not in our classical uh, joint operations, but in return operations, for instance, and has also been engaged in various of our uh, networks that deal with different aspects of return. Um, and uh, this includes preparatory work of return, but also pre-return pre, well, pre activities but also making use of a network. We are having um, a European return liaison offices deployed in various uh, non-EU countries. Uh, the operational engagement with uh, Irish authorities is also taking place in the field of EU law enforcement cooperation, namely in this impact uh, activities. Their cooperation takes place in different priority areas in the fight against organized crime such as migrant smuggling, uh, drugs or, or fraud, uh, including economic and financial crime, uh, where some of the operational actions uh, are led or supported by Frontex and where we also count on the valuable participation of law, um, Irish law enforcement or custom or custom authorities as well. Um, the possibilities for Irish engagement are not yet exhausted uh, from the founding uh, EU regulation um, contains specific legal provisions that would allow the agency to, to facilitate the operational cooperation and exchange of information between Ireland and some member states. Um, this is of relevance regarding uh, what we call Eurosur. It's our information uh, network uh, where um, the, the, or the prime information exchange platform with member states, uh, which, which allows us to keep um, situational awareness all over the external borders. And Irish participation in this Eurozone network uh, would require, uh, though, a, a prior uh, bilateral agreement between Ireland and uh, the EU member states participating in Schengen. Well, moving to Schengen as such, uh, related aspects here, I would like to first uh, stress its critical, critical importance for the European Union. This is the largest area uh, without borders uh, border control or free travel area in the entire world. And uh, the recent pandemic and also the crisis in 2015 with large uh, irregular uh, influx of migrants and asylum seekers and also deadly terrorist attacks uh, showed the considerable challenge of creating a real free movement area. The efforts to reinforce the Schengen area and its overall governance already started in 2015 with the establishment of the European Border and Coast Guard, which consists according to the regulation both of the authorities of the member states and Schengen associated countries uh, competent for border management on the one hand and uh, the Frontex agency uh, on the other hand. The aim was here to unite national and EU actors to implement what we call the European Integrated Border Management, or short IVM, uh, based on the principles of solidarity and shared responsibility laid down in the EU treaty and also in secondary legislation. Well, other than the, the Eurozone itself or monetary policy, I think IBM, it's fair to say that probably this EU policy area is where we have been achieving the highest level of integration between the EU and national administrations or executive layers. But uh, it goes without saying that the achievement of a, of a high and common level of protection of our external borders could not be limited to the adoption of common rules, like uh, what we have uh, on the legislative pillar, the Schengen's border code, for example, uh, or also to provide the funding for, for national authorities, but it's clear that a proper uh, operational pillar was also needed, which is, is now embodied, embodied in the agency in Frontex. And since 2021, Frontex counts on its own force, I might say, uh, namely the standing core. And I will come back to, to that in a little while when I'll speak about the Frontex ongoing transformation. Um, well, however, efforts to, to reinforce the Schengen area cannot only be concentrated at the external borders, they must be multifaceted. 
And this free movement area will not be viable in the long term if we don't have a real uh, common um, migration and asylum policy for, for which an agreement uh, on the pact uh, proposed by the Commission in September 2000 is, is really essential. Some legal instruments included in this new pact, this new proposal, affect uh, particularly the border uh, guard community, such as the, the proposed uh, screening regulation applied to third country nationals arriving um, at our external borders or the new Eurodac uh, and the asylum and return border procedures. However, efforts in migration, uh, asylum and return have to be complemented with much closer cross-border police cooperation, including information exchange to preserve internal security in our free movement area. Um, the latest commission proposals from only last month uh, in December 2029, uh, 2021, I'm sorry, um, are proposing to amend the rules for the control of our external borders, the Schengen Border Code, and they, they, conclude provi they include provisions to consider public health uh, threats and, and lessons learned from the COVID pandemic, uh, and also cases of instrumentalization um, of migrants like we were witnessing in, in, in just last year uh, at the eastern land borders. And this is completing the, the, the new legal and policy framework and the proposals. Some of these proposals also put forward a more robust uh, legal framework, including safeguards and coordination mechanisms for the measures uh, that member states may indeed take at their external uh, borders. Well, these are a lot of challenges and a lot of measures to agree on, but Schengen attractiveness remains, and it is best demonstrated, I find, by the fact that three additional EU member states are in the process of joining the Schengen area, uh, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, and Croatia, while uh, Cyprus has also applied for memberships, uh, for membership and for other non-EU states, uh, non-EU states, Norway, Iceland, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein are Schengen members too. Now, after this short intervention on Schengen, it is easier for me to explain uh, Frontex developments and transformation to, to deliver real operational value to the member states. Uh, the challenge for the agency in the past was indeed to provide this real solidarity and effective uh, operational support when what was the business model was to rely on um, pledges of member states for human resources and technical uh, equipment to deploy at the external borders, which has not always been easy and where we had constantly uh, requests to member states to chip in uh, resources, human resources or technical assistance, uh, te technical equipment. Uh, and it's here where the EU policy makers made a significant step forward in 2019 when they reached an agreement for Frontex to establish a standing core of up to 10,000 members by 2027. And 3,000 of these officers will be agencies, so meaning EU staff. And you can imagine what that means, EU staff, where EU staff regulations are, are applicable, which were made for, for civil servants, but which will now be applicable to operational colleagues who will be border guards uh, at the external borders in various countries uh, exercising um, executive power, so uh, enormous challenges. So I would like uh, to ask uh, the colleagues, please, to, to display quickly a short video we are we having prepared for, which is only two, two minutes, I believe, uh, to display that, please. I'm thrilled to be part of the first uniform service of the EU. I wanted to counter cross-border crime, and I believe that Frontex was the ideal platform to accomplish this goal. During my academic career, I studied political science and organized crime. After completing my studies, I had the opportunity to work with numerous police and armed forces, and for international and European institutions too. After completing my standing core training, I was deployed to Italy. Together with my colleagues, we perform uh, several tasks, countering cross-border crime, search and rescue. Standing core officers are deployed at airports, 
land and sea borders. The national authorities count on us to support them in their daily tasks. My colleagues and I must hit the ground running and ensure that we deliver the highest professionalism to the national authorities with whom we work. In the future, I would like to be more involved in search and rescue. At the moment, I'm attending a course to become a rescue swimmer. I'm from Portugal and I have been a police officer for the last 14 years. I'm in the headquarters in Warsaw. This is my first deployment. I'm leading a team that coordinates the missions of uh, Standing Corps officers that are deployed on the European borders. My children are with me. They uh, have the opportunity to live in a multicultural environment and to learn in that environment. So it's important for them and for me. I believe that Standing Corps is a great help for every EU citizen. We help EU countries with border control and fighting crime. Being the first ones, it means a lot. We were the chosen ones. I'm very proud because I believe we are a great team. Me and my colleagues work very well together. We all get along and our different backgrounds help us to make our work a success. I'm coming from Romania. I was uh, investigating criminal cases for more than 23 years. Economic crimes, frauds, trafficking in human beings, smuggling of migrants and money laundry. For me, moving to Frontex was like uh, changing the width of the umbrella. I'm sure I can use my experience in uh, helping Frontex to tackle cross-border crime. The security of Europe cannot be ensured without having a proper management at the external borders. The Standing Corps is the first ever uniform service of the European Union, helping member states tackle the challenges that might appear at the external borders. From my personal perspective, having all these colleagues with different backgrounds, you never cease to learn from them and to enrich your knowledge in different areas. I have a family. When I work for Frontex, I work also for my family, for the generation to come, for those benefiting from the fact that I bring my expertise and my effort to secure Europe. Thank you very much. So with uh, these pictures that you saw on the video on the first of the first EU uniformed service men and women working hand in hand with national officers all wearing the EU flag in the armband is a, is a very symbolic but also powerful signal that the EU is, is united when managing its common external borders. The standing core is not only a capability for the agency but for the whole European border and coast guard that member states shall used to complement their national capacities when facing exceptional situations, as well as for more routine border control operations. And um, approximately 1,250 members of the Standing Corps, including almost 500 own officers are, as we speak, or as I speak, deployed on the ground in different corners of, of our EU external borders, such as the Canary Islands, the Black Sea, uh, Finnish land borders, or major international airport hubs. In order to develop this new capability, the agency's budget experienced a sharp increase. In 2014, the agency's budget was around 93 million euros, while in 2021, we have reached uh, the 543 million euros. And this trend is meant to, to continue for the next years as our budget should amount to 785 million euros in 2023. We're witnessing some, something unique in the EU administrative landscape with the transformation of Frontex into a new type of organization. Our initial uh, operational mandate was limited to the planning, uh, coordination and final evaluation of the operations, but Frontex remained um, as, an, as any other EU agency and administrative body really. And this all changed with the new European border and coast guard regulations uh, in, in, uh, at the end of 2019 and the creation of the Standing Corps 
with executive powers to be exercised under the command and control of the member states hosting the operation. It altered the very basic principle and formal division of tasks between the agency and member states where the execution of Europe European policies, for instance, the enforcement of the, the Schengen border code rules was strictly and purely a task of the national administration. So that's the past. And now that is a joint responsibility. Our operational deployments are mainly tailored to respond to, to irregular migration pressure at various sections of the EU's external borders. Uh, in practice, this may imply the deployment of border surveillance means such as aircrafts or vessels to prevent or at least detect migrants arriving irregularly. Uh, we always aim at cost efficiency in our operations so that these rather costly uh, patrolling means are also used for detecting other smuggling activities falling in the remit of customs agencies or other cross-border crime. Uh, we have, for example, a, a very uh, fruitful uh, cooperation with uh, EFCA, the European fishery control agency where when our planes detect illegal fishing or pollution that is something we can of course and we are of course uh, bringing to the attention of, of other um, agencies and, and law enforcement authorities. I can also here refer to, to the first deployment of a surveillance plane we are uh, deploying in the channel in the North Sea, North sea region. These same surveillance means must be also at the disposal of the Regional Maritime Rescue and Coordination Center in case of distress calls at sea. And here our priority is always saving lives, but unfortunately loss of life remains a tragic reality, not only at the EU's southern maritime borders or eastern land borders. Frontex aerial surveillance means broadcast uh, distress calls to all vessels and aircraft uh, sailing in the vicinity among uh, those there can also be of course NGO vessels when patrolling in the Mediterranean for example and these vessels may also inform Frontex on search and rescue situation which will be then uh, forward to the competent, competent uh, regional maritime rescue and coordination centers. We must stress that the smuggling networks uh, are first and foremost responsible for, for these situations as part of their business model which may end up in real strategies. In fact, uh, migrant smuggling is amongst the fastest growing criminal industries. Migrant smugglers adapt quickly uh, to shifting demands and circumstances with new modus operandi and migratory routes. And the migrant smuggling industry provides high profits and un unfortunately still entails relatively low risk of punishment. From the approximately 10,000 facilitators being annually detected probably very few will actually face criminal charges. Law enforcement and judicial authorities encounter still some hurdles to successfully prosecute the per uh, perpetrators. This is the reason why Frontex is intensifying cooperation with Europol and very soon also with Eurojust so that valuable evidence, including migrant testimony themselves can enrich criminal investigations. We also expect that this cooperation with our EU internal security Operational partners will also help us to deliver results in the fight against terrorism. Our deployments at the external borders have already demonstrated the added value in the fight against cross-border crime when working in close coordination with other EU and national law enforcement services following a multidisciplinary approach. Our operations also support uh, migration and asylum management. And in many of the deployments, we include specialized standing core members to help local authorities to properly interview the third country nationals who arrived irregularly at the external borders and with the support of interpreters and cultural mediators, we process these migrants, including national, nationality determination, uh, biometric uh, registration and referral to the competent authority when they need international uh, protection or fall under another category of vulnerable people. We also expect to provide additional support to the local authorities in terms of security screening and registration once our standing core members will have the much needed access to the EU information systems like this, uh, the Schengen information system, the Eurodac uh, or, or Interpol databases. The agency support to the member states in the return of irregular migrants is also developing 
uh, the agency's initial legal mandate limited almost exclusively to the transportation and escort of the irregular migrants back to the third country has been considerably expanded to a much more integrated model, which should deliver better and more sustainable results. The pre-return activities focus on support for the identification and documentation of the third country nationals with the support of liaison officers in third countries, also seeking the cooperation with authorities of the country of origin. This is being complemented with post-return support to the individuals, including a reintegration package. Uh, we often or we sometimes like uh, cooperation from third countries of origin or transit or from the returnees themselves. However, there are also structural capacity gaps in national administrations that Frontex specialized standing core officers can help to fill. Frontex is also fostering the modernization and digitalization uh, of national return management, which should help in making the existing often cumbersome procedures more efficient. This modernization and digitalization process will affect even more border management activities, in particular border checks, uh, with the entry into operations next year of the entry and exit information system. And the systematic biometric uh, enrollment and registration of third country nationals crossing the external border will constitute a major test for national border guard services and transport uh, industry, including seaports and airports operators, which need to change business processes, train adequately the staff and install and test the required new equipment. Frontex is also here supporting member states to be ready in time with pilot project and technical assistance. We will host the central unit of the European Travel Information and Authorization System, which um, is, is in the new system, um, which should process uh, its first in its first year around 40 million uh, travel authorizations applications submitted by visa exempted third country nationals wishing to come and visit the Schengen area. I didn't want to finish my intervention without referring to the extreme fluid uh, geopolitical situation in our neighborhood and its direct uh, impact for our border and migration management systems. During the 2015 crisis, we all witnessed the importance of Turkey's role and the impact that the agreement had in stemming the flow of migrants and refugees in the Aegean Sea or in the Evros region. However, this success story had also its downside. Some foreign leaders took note of the over-reliance, I think we can say, of EU member states of the EU in general in its neighboring countries to manage irregular migratory flows. We showed somehow that we are also vulnerable and hence we need to continue to develop our border and migration management capacity, capabilities and capacities uh, independently of the arrangement we can reach with transit third countries. In certain ways, we can say that we also need a strategic autonomy when it comes to border and migration management capabilities. The case of Turkey was not an exception. We have seen in the past decades similar situation in other areas which had also traces of instrumentalization of migration. And uh, however, with the recent case of Belarus, we see even a step further since in this case, the national state actors were directly involved in the organization, transportation and facilitation of the irregular crossing of the external borders by the migrants. This was a tool to exercise political pressure on particularly neighboring EU member states as type of a new hybrid threat. We know that independently from the reinforcement of our border management systems, including our early warning mechanisms, the sustainable solutions require important political steps which rely on the role of the European Union in the world and in the capacity to project its interested and geopolitical powers in its neighborhood. The future is always uncertain, but the downward trend in numbers of irregular arrivals at the external borders we have witnessed since 2017 has already changed with an increase last year of 41%, uh, i.e. From, from roughly a bit under 100,000 um, um, uh, recorded uh, irregular border crossings to 139 in uh, 2021. And furthermore, the major megatrends affecting 
uh, integrated border management, such as the change of uh, demographic imbalances, climate change are even here to stay. So with this, I would like to, to, to finish my intervention and I would like to really thank you for the invitation once more and the attention. And I'm of course, looking forward to the questions and answers we might uh, be looking at.